we had the other day an exclusive interview with an ex-Beijing engineer who revealed to us how far the CCP will go to track its own citizens as well as you. Tiffany? Yes, so I feel like, you know, it's no surprise everyone's talking about the threat of China, especially its apps, blah, blah, blah. But what is the actual extent of it? So here's a great example where this former engineer, he has since, you know, fled to the U.S., hence he's telling us everything from the safety of the United States. But he was directly involved with something. So he was laying out exactly what goes into these apps. So it's like it's twofold. It's the software and the hardware. So if they don't get you through the app, they can get you through the hard way. So we're going to break all of that down. So basically, he was in one of those tech companies in China's version of Silicon Valley. And one day they get a bid to work on a contract for the PLA or the People's Liberation Army, but specifically the Navy. And at first he's like, oh, it's just going to be one of the normal bids. And then it goes on to a bigger company. They have the backing and blah, blah, blah. We'll just do that. But then as we got the assignment, he was like, wait, this is about surveillance. He's like, what we're doing here isn't for a regular bid. And so what they created was an app that every single sailor as part of the Navy has to download. And it's a custom app. So once you install it, this app has permissions for everything on your phone. So not just your app, it can read your keystrokes, what pages you're opening, la -di -da -di -da, where you're going, it can track movement as well. And your and then, on your personal phone. Yes. Mm. So this app, once you get it onto your phone, it'll do all of that. And then it's going to funnel all of that data to a central server. And so it's capturing everything you do and where you go. So part of the purpose of that is like if you're, it'll, so A, it has a list of sensitive terms already. So if you're ever typing those sensitive terms, you know, want to talk about Taiwan, Tibet, anything that China sees as a red line, it'll have a little alert pop up next to you, your name as you're messaging your friends, you know, you think this is a private conversation. Even if it's like one of the encrypted apps, because it has access to everything on your phone, it can already see that. So you could be put on a list for that, but because it also tracks movement, the point of that was like, if you're leaving more than 100 meters or 328 feet beyond a specific point, if you're on like a military compound, it'll send a little alert to the central server. And people who are watching there could be like, oh, maybe you're a spy. Why are you always leaving? You know, so it's like full scale surveillance. But so this is one end. And his point about this was like this, Example obviously was for the Navy, but he said you can enroll this anywhere. This could be for schools, it could be for other companies. It's not just specifically for the military. So he's like, that's where the threat comes in. Because like if you just have that know-how, that software, any app could have that. Why, why, hence we always talk about ByteDance and TikTok and you know all these other Chinese apps like Red Note. Caught transmitting data to China just recently, matter of fact. Yes, and then... Wait a minute, so, so you're saying that Red Note app on my phone that I downloaded? <laughs> that's not safe? Surprise, surprise. Oh, no. Well, so here's the thing. Um, especially with TikTok, there are a couple different uh, articles from different places where they were researching. And one example was someone who had just downloaded the app but never opened it. And then they're going through their storage, you know, seeing how where all your <laughs> capacity is disappearing to. And they realized that this app that they had never opened, TikTok, had a massive amount of data stored. They're like, what? Why? Like, I've never opened the app. That's because I had the same keystroke access that this guy is talking about in terms of this software where you see every single keystroke. So earlier we we're talking about health. So if you, you know, you're not on that app but you're browsing the internet from your phone or you're opening up your contacts, you're typing in your passwords, it can see everything because it has that level of permissions. Even on the iPhone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like Look, all these if, different if, things. If you, if you download the app and you agree to the terms of service, which you usually do when you download it. You have to. You grant it access to your keystrokes as a way of typing in. Yeah. Is that true though? Yeah. I, feel like, yeah, yeah. I feel like Apple has like pretty no, good safety, no, no, no. safety standards. Not if you download the app Be because look, what, what, is, what is the system that allows the app to recognize when you're typing? Magic. Yeah, magic, right? And so you're, you're using that and you're communicating to the app, which is the system on the cloud, uh, what you're typing. And so you have to give it access to that. Plus, if you've agreed to it, it's not about security no, but this of the iPhone. I mean, there was a whole like uh, controversy a few years ago where a Apple began asking apps to ask you, like, do you want this app to track you or not? And if you say not, like, they can't, right? In settings, In can you disable that? Well, so here's the thing. There's certain levels. Some might be a bit better. Ultimately, if you really want to be secure, you have to get a phone that, you know, can only call. A burner. Uh, a Nokia. A Nokia flip phone, flip phone yeah. that can only call. Trump, so a Trump phone, perhaps. 
Uh, mate, we'll see. We'll see where those are made. So here's the thing. That was the software part, right? And then he was saying the second part, the hardware part, is chips. So that's the real Trojan horse, to your point, right? It's like certain phones, whatever, can they remove the access to if you deny it? So he's talking about, you know, if you've watched or noticed <laughs> Beijing's stance on chips, they're quite alarmed. They're trying to make their own versions, even though they're very far behind. And we just saw this week uh, China cyber security people were hauling in people from NVIDIA mm. <laughs> because they were really alarmed that the U.S. has backdoors in certain chips in NVIDIA chips that we could be accessing things inside Beijing. That goes back to the Chips Act that was passed in both the House and Senate back in May. And part of that was that you would have to have these backdoors inside the chip itself as part of the ways it's like verification tech to make sure that it's not being smuggled into somewhere like China where it's oh, not supposed to be. But China is very stressed because they're like, oh, my gosh, like what kind of information are you getting from that? We don't want that because they like doing that. They like having that type of hardware access. That's what they're calling the modern day Trojan horse, which is like you can have that inside the chip that's inside your phone. So it doesn't matter what apps you're installing. Yeah. Chi China's been caught doing that a lot. There have been security researchers who bought phones from China and they find that there's spying systems built into the phones at the chip level. Mm -hmm. And it's and not it's, and it's not even just chips, it's e even other components. So what a lot of people don't notice or don't know is you have the surface software you interact with but there's software on the chips themselves and then firmware communicates between the surface, the, stu the stuff you can actually work with and the actual components. Uh, and so the stuff that's installed within the components, the chips, uh, even, I mean, it can be anything. You can't change that. You can't monitor it, you can't access it. And, and that kind of stuff is what they use for that type of spying usually. And then so he was extrapolating out to another level, which is that there's also Skynet and Sharp Eyes. These are part of their mass surveillance systems. These tie in more than 600 million cameras nationwide. So all of that footage is going back again to these systems. So it's like you have control on the software level, the hardware level, and then also visually they can track people, right? So then the Even your gate, right? Yeah. How so you the whole there was a big point, warning out just recently that China was actually using even stuff they're selling the United States cameras for espionage. Yeah. And then you see all the headlines, right? The UK Parliament was like, hold up, why are these cameras, Hick vision cameras in our parliament where our sensitive conversations and policy decisions are being made. In the US, there's a lot of focus on DJI drones, which a lot of our law enforcement uses. It's like, okay, wait, where is all of that information and facial recognition? And the Chinese and routers that were caught doing the exact same thing. That So it's whole of scale surveillance. And then his point is like, okay, well, what can China do with all of this data? So at a low level, when you don't have a lot, you can do things like scam calls. You're like, okay, I can kind of predict, we were talking about health earlier, maybe I need this drug. It's like, you're going to call as a doctor. You have, you know, you're at risk for a heart attack. You should really take this drug. You know, you can do stuff like that. It's called but, fentanyl. Sorry. It, <laughs> uh, and then, but when you have a lot of information and like most of the society, you can start steering investment trends and even sparking protests in different places, right? We're already seeing that with the uh, FBI warning in 2022 that China steals more personal and corporate data, to your point with the OBM hack, than any other nations combined, adversarial nations combined. And what are they doing with that? So around the elections, you saw a lot of different groups. There was a House Select Committee on the CCP. They were very concerned about the routers and the data they're getting that way. So when it comes to elections, it's like you see all these different things where People get their news from TikTok or like social media platforms. You look at the hashtags, you see the points that are being raised. And then China also has their bot farms, right? The 50 cent army, there's little people. They also have bots doing that AI now as well, not just people uh, getting paid 50 cents. Um, and part of that is they, they notice what issues of contention are arising in different places, right? Especially ahead of elections, say abortion is a huge one or gun rights or pro or against the second amendment, stuff like that. And then they fan the flames of that and then they can rile up a population to be like, oh my gosh, I have to vote because this that I care about is at stake. And you see certain things where people are talking about instances of that where it could be at the scale of election interference right you're seeing some reporting lately coming out about the 2020 election where whether it's uh fake ids that were issued out so that people could vote 
or different cases in terms of social media where you're seeing ads that are targeted at people and then suddenly because if they know everything that you're watching and reading and swiping on they can start predicting and manipulating your worldview if you will there are actually studies about that where you see people getting influenced ahead of elections so so communist either... china is trying to increase our democratic engagement <laughs> well the idea is what what media you read determines basically your perceptions on political policies and politics. If you can control the information, you can control basically people's general political beliefs. Yeah. So I figured that would be tied into networks of bots and other things that they have, which are trying to, you know, farm opinion. That's not enough. You see, they need to know the truth. Because what you, what, what you present on Twitter is not the real you. They need to know who you really are. They need to have access to your notes app which they can only get if they have a chip installed in your phone and they know what you are writing only to yourself to read. Any final thoughts, Tiffany? Well, just in this example, this software engineer, you know, he always saw himself as a Communist Party loyalist. He had nothing against the party, yada, yada, yada. And then one day his younger brother had posted something that was a bit more pro-Taiwan independence. And immediately, just because his younger brother had posted that, um, you know, he came, police showed up actually <laughs> at the door, confronted him and the parents with transcripts about that. And then so he posted something about that. And then his account was immediately deleted. And he was like, wait, what the heck? Like, I'm a software engineer. I, I, I believe in the party. I believe he's like, if this can happen to me, I've never done anything against this. It can happen to anyone, especially those who are talking about sensitive things. So right now there's a lot of talk about, you know, the UK, uh, different rules that they have implemented to protect children online. And then now suddenly everyone has to put in age verification. One example was someone was looking at a feed about menswear, you know, what you should, which type of leather shoes you should wear with your suits. And he had to put in his age to uh, <laughs> prove he's over 16. So it's like, to your point about like, how are you getting the information to decide who you're going to vote for if you can't? get that information. So it's like all these different layers where maybe it's not anything new, but here's another example of how deep it goes. Mm -hmm. All right, so if you're watching this and you're thinking about getting that smart refrigerator with all those special functions, you know, maybe just check where that refrigerator is made. It's made in China, just like the toaster that's made in China and your laundry machine that's made in China. Maybe those chips are watching you from all angles and now, and now what? You're just there being watched by the CCP. Not, not a good feeling, so just stay away from the Chinese chips. All right, I know exactly what you're thinking. That was a great clip you just watched. Now, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to follow, and also check out either these videos or maybe they're on this side, I don't know which side they're on, but we set it up so these are the videos that YouTube is suggesting to you as the best ones that you'll probably like the most. So check them out, this side, this side, 